Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here. I uh, have no announcements to make, so I will go straight to your questions. Julie Pace. Thank you. Um, there seems to be a little bit of confusion about what exactly the White House Counsel's Office was told the week of April 22nd about the IG report to the IRS. Can you tell us what Kathy Rummer was told? Sure. Well, I appreciate the question. Uh, and there have, <laughs> there have been a lot of questions this morning uh, that we've gotten based on recent reports uh, about when uh, we here at the White House learned of the Inspector General's report, what we learned, and how we learned. Uh, so I'd like to back up and just go through the fundamentals here first, if I may. Number one, as the independent Inspector General testified, and as his report says, he found no evidence that anyone outside of the IRS had any involvement in the inappropriate scrutinizing of conservative groups who were applying for tax-exempt status. Number two, no one in this building intervened in an ongoing independent investigation or did anything that could be seen as intervening in that investigation. Number three, the misconduct uh, had stopped in May of 2012. So despite all the media interest in our April 2013 awareness, uh, it's important to remember that the misconduct, of course, had stopped almost a year earlier. Uh, but going to your question, and in light of those questions, let me walk you through this because uh, we don't have any interest in being anything uh, other than clear with you about, about that timeline. So as we have said, the White House counsel, counsel, Kathy Rumler, learned during the week of April 22nd, the specific date is April 24th, that the Inspector General was finalizing an audit. That's what they call this, this, uh, this kind of uh, report. At the time, the audit was still ongoing, and the Inspector General had not issued its final report. The White House Counsel's Office routinely receives notification of pending Inspector General matters, as does Congress. And in fact, this, one, uh, this was one of several IG reports likely to be released uh, soon that were communicated to staff in the White House Counsel's Office on April 16th in a series of items. But on April 24th, as I said, the White, the White House counsel, Kathy Rumler, was informed that the Inspector General for Tax Administration was completing a report about line IRS employees improperly scrutinizing uh, what are known as 501c4 organizations by using uh, words such as Tea Party and Patriot. Council was further informed that the report had not been finalized and the publication date of the report was uncertain but likely soon. While we had an indication of the likely findings, until the IG finalizes his report, the findings and conclusions are subject to change. And in fact, many IG reports do change significantly before they are published. So to be clear, we knew the subject of the investigation, and we knew the nature of some of the potential findings, but we did not have a copy uh, of the draft report. We did not know the details, the scope, or the motivation surrounding the misconduct. And we did not know who was responsible. Most importantly, the report was not final and still very much subject to change. After that initial notification in April, the White House counsel informed the chief of staff and other members of the senior staff. At no time did anyone on the White House staff intervene with the IRS Inspector General audit. There were communications between White House counsel's office and White House chief of staff's office uh, with uh, Treasury uh, Office of General Counsel and Treasury's chief of staff office to understand the uh, anticipated timing of the release of the report and the potential findings by the IG. Uh, we know that the Hill also got briefings. As Congressman Issa said, he was aware of, quote, approximately, unquote, what was in the report. But he rightly chose to not take action, uh, because the cardinal rule is to not intervene in an independent investigation or take any steps that could be seen as intervening. Uh, that's what we abided by, and that's what any White House uh, should do. Um, I just want to say that some reporting today says, suggests, and this is I think uh, worth noting, suggests that given awareness of the potential findings, we should have done more. Uh, that could not be further from the right course of action. The cardinal rule, as I said, is that you do not intervene in an independent investigation, and you do not do anything that should, would be, uh, that would give such an uh, appearance, particularly when the final conclusions, as was the case here, have not been reached. And that's the doctrine we followed. And the bottom line is, and this is just, uh, this isn't just the most important fact, it's what we have said from the beginning. Neither the White House nor Treasury intervened in the Inspector General's audit. So I hope that, anticipating this question, understanding there was some confusion about it, I hope that uh, supplies the answers that you were hoping to get. Uh, 
I supplied some of them. Can I just clarify a couple of things? Sure. You said someone was pulled on April 16th in the council's office. There was a uh, White House counsel, Kathy Rumler, was uh, notified on uh, April 24th, the week of April 22nd. Uh, there was also a notification as part of just a series of items, uh, I IG uh, related items from Treasury, that this was upcoming, uh, again, very top line. Uh, but White House counsel herself was not notified until later uh, the next week. And who was she notified by? Uh, with e uh, either within Treasury or by uh, someone else in the White House counsel's office, but the same the same notification process. And and who else besides Chief of Staff Dennis McDonough uh, was, was told about this? Uh, some other members of senior staff. I don't have a list for you now. And then last week, when this all first came out, you said that the council was told very broadly. Mm -hmm. But you didn't mention anything else about other staff knowing. You didn't mention <coughs> some of these more specific details that they were told, including some of the words that uh, the, this IRS office used to target some of these groups. Is that what you're telling us today, consistent with your statement last week, that the council was only told very broadly it, about this well, report? Well, I think she, she was, as I just described. I mean, that's sort of the entirety of what she was told, broadly, that there's an, uh, an inspector general audit reaching its conclusion. Uh, the potential findings are that some people uh, improperly targeted conservative organizations in their applications for tax-exempt status. Uh, but there was no specificity about who, about motivation, uh, certainly no names uh, of involvement. Uh, and it was not concluded, and it's important to know uh, the way these things work, IG reports, that, that the, the finalization process can result in significant changes. So our whole point has been that knowing that this was coming uh, does not change the fact that there was nothing we could have or should have done about it, because it was an independent inspector general report. And I, again, as I said at the end, I think it's somewhat ironic that there has been some suggestion that action should have been taken because we were aware that the IG was, uh, an independent IG was reaching uh, the conclusion of a report and that it might uh, find, have these findings, that somehow the President should have been notified or that we should have done something. And of course, uh, the opposite is true because uh, these kinds of independent investigations need to be independent. There should be no intervention by a White House and, and of course there was not in this case. And, and that's why we had to wait appropriately until the report was publicized or published for uh, the president to be able to review it and respond, as he did very quickly. He took action right away. He made sure that, uh, that Secretary Liu uh, asked for and accepted the resignation of the acting commissioner. He appointed a new acting commissioner. He very quickly uh, made sure that the new acting commissioner would uh, institute a top-down 30-day review uh, uh, of everything we could find out about this or they could find out about this to make sure that uh, those who participated in the failings are held responsible and that the activity uh, doesn't happen again. Well, what I don't understand is mm -hmm. if the White House felt comfortable with the council, the chief of staff, and other members of the senior staff knowing about this report even very broadly mm -hmm. and was not concerned that just the mere fact of knowing it created the potential for interference, why couldn't the president have also just known that this was coming without interfering? Well, again, because uh, it's a judgment, in this case, the judgment of the White House counsel that uh, this is not a matter to, that uh, you should uh, or that she should convey to the president, uh, and that was the, uh, op her opinion that she expressed to other members of the senior staff, uh, that this is not the kind of thing when you have an ongoing investigation or an ongoing audit uh, that uh, requires notification to the president, because uh, what is important is that we wait until that kind of process is completed before uh, we take action, and that's what the president did. Okay. Did the White House know in advance um, that the IRS was going to plant a question at the American Bar Association event on May 10th? No. As a way of getting the news out, no? No. And um, was the White House involved in all of the strategy for sort of rolling out the disclosure of the report's findings? Well, I think that, as you've seen, we didn't know that it was coming, and, it, and when it, when it uh, was reported on that Friday, uh, that's how the president found out about it, and, and some of us uh, found out about it. Uh, so no, we weren't involved. And further to what Julie had asked, you've given us some But let, let me, let me just, I just want to be clear, because I, I made this clear in the, I mean, I said this in the earlier part. There were conversations after White House counsel uh, was notified and told some senior staff members, there were conversations uh, between uh, staff here and Treasury about uh, when the, you know, what was the timing going to be, uh, what would the, what would the findings likely be. 
uh, in anticipation of that, but there was no uh, foreknowledge of the when this uh, when this happened. And today you've you've talked about you've given us some more details about who knew what when. Um, the April 16th detail, the discussions between the council's office and treasury, etc. Why didn't you tell us that last week on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when you talked about this? I I uh, just told you what I told you last week, which is that Kathy Rummel of the White House Council was made aware uh, the week of April 22nd. I've, I've now gotten the specific date of April 24th. Uh, it does turn out, and we looked at this, that there was a part of this notification process of, of a series of IG, pending IG matters uh, that was conveyed to, communicated to uh, someone in the staff of the White House Counsel's Office, but that information did not reach uh, Kathy Rommler until the following week. And when were the other hey. White House? Can you just say no. when the other White House staffers were notified then? After yeah. Kathy Rumler was uh, notified on the them. 24th. She informed them, yes. Because when you were asked about this in the briefing last week, about White House officials being aware, you just mentioned the council's office. You never mentioned that the chief of staff and others were well, notified. Well, I, I, I think I said that White House counsel knew. I think I said that I didn't know till Friday, but I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm getting this information to you now. The point is, council knew on April 24th, White House counsel did, and she informed some other senior staff. Uh, and with that, in, in, in that, in informing, she also made clear that it was her view, and, and others shared this view, that there was uh, not a need in a situation like this with an ongoing investigation or audit uh, that the president should be notified. What did yeah. Chris McDonough and the other members of senior staff do with that information? Did they share it with others? Uh, there were discussions um, here, and as I said, there were conversations from uh, uh, his, the White House Chief of Staff's office with uh, General Counsel at Treasury and uh, and the Chief of Staff's Office of Treasury uh, about the timing, anticipated timing of the release of the report and the potential findings. But there was, again, the, the point was no, no intervention, no action, because it would be entirely inappropriate to do anything except uh, ultimately wait for what the findings would be and then act. Just to mm -hmm. be clear, sure. what's the point of notifying anyone if nothing can be done? The way, as I understand it, and it's been described to me, is that when there are IG reports, and, and it's important to know, because this is, you know, this is Washington speak when we talk about IG audits and things like that, but there are inspectors general all across the government, and they are routinely uh, looking into matters uh, that are assigned to them or that they take up, and there are reports routinely uh, completed or near completion, and when there is one that might get, uh, that, that an IG feels or the overseeing body, in this case Treasury feels, might get a lot of attention. Uh, there are notifications made just to on your radar kind of thing. So uh, but there's no action it. that's taken, uh, at least there should be no action taken, and that was the case so here. Why did she feel it incumbent to tell Dennis McDonough but not the President? <laughs> Is it standard practice to insulate the President from controversial IG but reports it, across the board? I, I think it was again a notification, you know, the, just so you know, this, this is coming down. Here's what we know about it. We'll find out more when it's completed. IG reports, I'm, I'm just paraphrasing as a, as a sort of an example, IG reports uh, tend to change a lot before finalized. We don't know the specifics of who did this, why they no, did it. The draft what. audit was shared with Treasury in mid-March. Right, but not shared with us. The Treasury oversees the IRS. But, but they had a draft. I mean, that's my understanding, but I would refer you to Treasury. But again, that's, we did not, we were, the, as I described it to you, that was what we learned about, uh, or that the council learned about the potential or likely findings. Oh, the that there were uh, line employees at the IRS who <coughs> improperly targeted conservative groups uh, with uh, some of the, the word, the language that I just used, uh, and that this report was likely to be completed soon, although we didn't have a specific date. It doesn't answer why the president wasn't told that Dennis McDonough was, but. Well, I, I think as I noted earlier, in these, these situations, uh, the council uh, made the uh, decision that this is not the kind of thing that you notify the president of, a, of, a, of an investigation that's not complete uh, because it wouldn't be appropriate Sarah, to do so. Sure. Confusion about how involved Sarah Hall Ingram has been at the IRS division in question. If you go to their website, she's still to this day listed as commissioner of the Office of Tax Exempt and Government Entities Division. But the IRS says she's also been assigned to help head up the implementation of the Affordable Care Act. So throughout the time in question, was she in charge of the office that did I think you would have to ask her. My, underst my understanding, based on what I've seen, is that she was reassigned to another responsibility. I, uh, I understand the title may have, you know, she may have kept the title, but, but that's the kind of detail that you'd have to ask. Would the president uh, like IRS to see somebody treasury. else in charge? I think charge it's also important to note that, as I understand it, based on the IG's report, which is how I got my information on this, uh, that she is not 
named in the report, and, and as far as we know, there's been no suggestion that she did anything improper. But the President has asked the new acting IRS commissioner uh, to conduct a top-down 30-day review to look at these questions about accountability and, and look at how to take measures to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Would you again. like her to recuse herself from the role for 30 days? I, this, again, this is a question I think appropriately addressed to uh, the new leadership at IRS and at Treasury. IRS is conducting a 30-day review. Before you uh, decide that somebody's culpable of something, I think you need to get the facts first. And based on my understanding of the IG report, uh, it, uh, th this is not addressed. So uh, there is a 30-day uh, top-down review being conducted by the new acting IRS commissioner, and I expect that uh, some of these issues will be looked at. John. But, Jay, for, for all the questions about who knew uh, what a few weeks ago uh, at the White House, isn't the, the question back further? How was this allowed to go on for 18 months? I mean, there were public reports while this was still happening uh, of groups complaining that they had been uh, asked I, these questions. I think that's a great questions. question. I think that's why uh, there was uh, an IG uh, audit. Uh, I believe in response in part to congressional inquiries well, sure. uh, and, sure. and the finding, I mean, but, but I, I, I take your question. That's why you saw the President's response, which was uh, very clear. He was outraged by the ha behavior. He thought the, appropriate, the, the conduct was inappropriate, that people need to, be, uh, need to be held responsible, and that process has begun. And we need to make sure that nothing else, like nothing like this can happen again. I mean, nobody's been more outraged by the report the reported conduct here than the President of the United States. Jay, with all due respect, the outrage from the President came, you know, last week. This the was outrage going from the on. President but, came but, but, but within this, hours after the release but, of the report. But, but, but what I'm saying is there were public reports that this mm -hmm. stuff was going on uh, almost a year before the presidential election. How is it that nobody in the administration has some responsibility, <coughs> well, even on. before there is an Inspector General report, to say, hey, by the way, this kind of activity is, it shouldn't be going on, so let's make sure and take steps uh, Again, I would stop. direct you to uh, the IG who investigated this matter, to the uh, Treasury Department and others who addressed this matter. I, I can tell you that uh, what we're talking about here was the ongoing Inspector General audit, uh, the fact that we were notified, uh, the White House Counsel was notified that it was coming to a conclusion, uh, and uh, like Chairman Ice and others, uh, we did not prejudge it. We waited until the report came out before we acted, and the President acted very quickly. You're missing the point of my question. Public reports almost a year before the election. Is there any responsibility from the administration of, of, of saying, hey, IRS, we don't treat groups differently based on politics? I, I think that uh, it is absolutely our view. We wait for the report after the election to make But, but you're saying there are ac accusations, and I think that uh, my understanding is that in response to those accusations, there was an IG audit launched. Uh, that is appropriate, and the findings are what we now know, and the President's response to those findings mm -hmm. could not be more clear. Uh, people need to be held responsible, and we need to make sure that this activity doesn't happen again because it's very important that the American people believe that the IRS applies our tax laws fairly and neutrally. Okay, and I'm also uh, I, just, just a, a little confused on this planted question. First of all, does the White House approve of that tactic of releasing information? Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know uh, anything more about it than what I read in the paper. Uh, our feeling has been from the beginning, since we were notified of the impending uh, completion of the IG report, uh, that we would uh, refrain from commenting on, uh, you know, reports about draft language, uh, reports about what may or may not be in the findings of the IG uh, until the IG actually published his report. When that happened, uh, the President responded very quickly, both uh, within hours after the publication of the report and then again the next day. When he met with Treasury leadership, uh, the acting IRS commissioner's resignation was accepted and the President appointed a new IRS commissioner. And, and just one more question. Does the President approve of the Justice Department's handling of the Jin Woo Kim leak investigation? Uh, we now know that the FBI investigators in this case not only seized James Rosen's phone records, they went through and read his emails, they tracked his comings and goings inside the State Department. Does the President approve of that kind of action by the Justice Department against a reporter? I will uh, refer you to what the President said in response to a question about another uh, matter along these lines, and that is that he is a strong defender of the First Amendment uh, and a firm believer, believer in the need for the press uh, to be able to, uh, to conduct investigative reporting and facilitate a free flow of information. He is also, as a citizen and as Commander-in-Chief, uh, insistent that we protect our, our secrets, that we protect classified information, and that leaks 
uh, that we take very seriously the leaks of classified information because leaks can endanger the lives uh, of men and women in uniform and other Americans serving overseas for our country. And uh, that is a balance he seeks, and it is uh, reflected in the media shield law uh, that his administration negotiated with the Senate in 2009, in which the President is very happy to see uh, the Senate take up again. Uh, that's a balance that was endorsed at the time uh, by, every, you know, from media organizations to federal prosecutors. I cannot, of course, con comment on a specific, ongoing criminal investigation. Jay, do you approve of those kind of tactics yeah, as a I former reporter? It, it, I cannot comment on a specific, ongoing investigation. I certainly uh, share, and I think most Americans do, uh, the President's belief that we need to have, uh, you know, a, a, a press that is uh, able to pursue investigative journalism. Uh, and that uh, we have to defend the First Amendment. I also think it's very important, uh, as I think members of both parties uh, have said, that we need to make sure that leaks are not tolerated because leaks that can endanger the lives of our men and women and endanger our national security need to be taken very seriously. But that is, again, not a comment on a specific case because I cannot comment on a specific case. Yeah. To follow up that, the subpoena says James Rosen is a potential criminal because he's a reporter. Mm. Is the White House comfortable with that standard, never before seen, in a leak investigation? Again, I, Major, I understand the question and I appreciate it, but I cannot comment on an ongoing. Well, that's not ongoing. That happened. That's it, in the subpoena. You can read it on the web right now. Well, I know, but it's part of an ongoing criminal investigation, uh, Major, and I, I simply can't comment on it. But, but I, if you look at the, the story, I think that to others are commenting. Is a reporter in a subpoena as a potential criminal for doing what reporters do? Major, I, I understand the question. Uh, I think that the appropriate place to address these questions uh, is to the Department of Justice and to those in, uh, actually engaged in this criminal investigation. I think if you look at the story, uh, there are people who are talking about it, and I would refer you to them. I simply but cannot, has again, going to leak investigations in ways no other commander in chief has. It's his priority I think that the Justice Department is carrying out. I think I'm the president, like his predecessors, believes that particular application the, pre the of president his priority. The President believes, I think as uh, all of his predecessors believed, uh, that it is imperative that leaks that can jeopardize the lives of American men and women serving overseas uh, should not be tolerated, and that, and that leaks that can jeopardize our national security are very serious matters. And I would point you to uh, what the FBI Director, uh, Director Mueller, and the Attorney General have said about the seriousness of one of these leaks. Director Mueller testified that, quote, leaks such as this threaten ongoing to operations put at risk the lives of sources, make it much more difficult to recruit sources, and damage our relationships with our foreign partners. That is why we have to take these seriously. It is also why we need to find the right balance to ensure that our First Amendment is defended and to assure that reporters are protected. That's why the President helped negotiate the Media Shield Law that uh, made its way out of committee in 2009, and that's why he supports its reintroduction today. In your summary at the top, talking about the IRS, you mentioned that the IG audit, which is the proper word for it, it's not an investigation, it's an mm -hmm. audit, concluded that there was no outside interference or suggestion. Do you believe that closes the question? Because several of the committees on Capitol Hill don't believe it closes the question. We support congressional oversight, legitimate congressional oversight in this matter. Uh, we support, in fact, the President asked for the 30-day top-down review that will be conducted by the new acting IRS commissioner. Uh, and I believe, I've seen reported, that the uh, Department of Justice is looking into this matter. Uh, all of this is appropriate as far as we are concerned. I'm simply telling you that the matter that sparked... But it doesn't close it. Well, I think that there, sh there can and will be and should be oversight and, and, and more questions asked. I mean, one of the things that I made clear in answer to Jessica's question is that, you know, we don't have all the details about uh, who was responsible for uh, this uh, inappropriate behavior, and that's why the President wants those who are responsible to be held accountable, and he wants steps taken to ensure uh, that it cannot happen again, because he has zero tolerance for this. Uh, he believes it's very important that the IRS uh, carry out and implement our tax laws in, in a neutral and fair way, and that, the, and that Americans uh, need to be confident that that is happening, and any indication that it's not needs to be taken very seriously, which is how he has taken it. Did, uh, you've obviously asked more questions uh, in preparation for this briefing than were asked and answerable last week. So I'm curious, do you know if Treasury Secretary Geithner was informed 
of the IG report, even in its preliminary state, and if he in any way communicated that to the President? Uh, I, would, I would refer you to the Treasury Department, and I think that Secretary Liu uh, uh, and, and, uh, and others have addressed this, but I, I, I have no knowledge of that. <coughs> Can I follow on IRS? I just want to know. Just yesterday, Dan Pfeiffer uh, on the shows was saying that the, uh, the uh, Treasury Department informed the White House but did not get into any, in his words, details mm -hmm. of what happened on the IRS situation. And yesterday, uh, last week rather, at this podium, you said that uh, in the week of April 22nd, you were only informed that the IG was finishing a review about matters involving the office in Cincinnati. Well, that's one of the things I said. I made clear that it was top line but no conclusions, details. and that's and, and there were no details. I think I just explained to you the details, the the, the phrases, and the fact that they would likely find, uh, likely conclude that this conduct had occurred inappropriately. But we still do not know that like who's responsible. Details. Not like uh, every single detail, but but you, it's beyond. I think you're just parsing my line. words. I, I'm here to tell you that uh, the information that I just uh, provided to you at the top is the information that White House counsel received. It's the information that she conveyed to some senior staff. Uh, and uh, the most important point here is that, contrary to some suggestions about how we should have responded to that, uh, there was no uh, effort to intervene in an ongoing Inspector General uh, inquiry, audit, report, investigation, uh, nor should there be. And uh, that is why. Uh, to the chagrin of some who would have liked us to get out in front of this more, uh, we appropriately waited until the Inspector General published that report. Uh, and we had all of the information that was available, at least in that report, uh, to act on and respond to. When you also said at the top of this briefing the President acted right away, took decisive action, mm -hmm. um, you say, so why then is the, the key person who's been pushed out is Stephen Miller? Who is planning to retire in June anyway? But also, as well, you I know, that's actually a mischaracterization. His his title was uh, uh, was expiring. He could easily have been reappointed uh, had this not happened. I suppose he might have been. But the but the point. But he's on the job today. Uh, he's leaving Wednesday, uh, as I understand it. I would it. refer you. Uh, he he may be Ed. I can refer you. Refer so you to the IRS. Accountability. How is the person still on the job? I, I I believe he might be testifying on the Hill, Ed, which I'm sure some people would be uh, like to see. So. The fact is, he's being he's been he's re, he's resigned from he that also post. Also testifies as a private citizen, he's, of course. I'm not sure I take your point, but the the, the fact is, he's resigned uh, entirely from the IRS, uh, and a new acting commissioner has been uh, appointed. How can you say uh, on the James Rosen situation that that part of the goal here is to protect reporters, when the administration went through his personal email? How, how are you protecting well, reporters? What I did say was not respond specifically to a question about the case. I said that the President believes it's important uh, that we find the proper balance between the need, absolute need, to protect our secrets and to prevent leaks that can jeopardize the lives of Americans and can jeopardize our national security interests on the one hand, and the need for, uh, to defend the First Amendment and protect the ability of reporters to pursue investigative journalism. Th that balance is reflected in the media shield law that the administration negotiated with the Senate in 2009 and the President supported, and which he supports to this day and is being reintroduced. Uh, that bill uh, that the administration negotiated was endorsed by media organizations and federal prosecutors, and I think that that is an indication of the fact that it uh, at least uh, came some way to achieving the balance that the President has talked about. While we wait for that legislation to potentially pass, mm -hmm. in the meantime, the administration is acting in the AP case and in the Rosen case as well. Uh, do you actually believe as a former reporter that someone trying to get sensitive information from government officials as a reporter is a criminal? Well, Ed, I would just tell you that I, I can't comment on a specific case. Uh, I'm here but uh, as, principle? but I'm, I'm, I'm here as a spokesman uh, for the President in the White House. I can't comment on an ongoing criminal investigation, uh, nor should I. Uh, and I think there's uh, tons of precedent for why that is the case. Uh, secondly, I think that I share the President's, uh, personally as a former reporter, uh, but also uh, in this capacity, I share the President's belief that we need to find a balance. And I think uh, that uh, most Americans believe that we need to uh, protect our secrets and make sure that classified information that, if leaked, could endanger the lives uh, of Americans or uh, sources uh, uh, is not leaked and that we take that seriously. But we also have to allow for reporters to freely investigate uh, as part of their jobs. And that's, and that's what I was referring to when I was talking to his support for the Media Shield law. Can, can I just follow that quickly? Sorry, let me. Uh, no, I, I want to, I guess I'm, tr I'm trying to understand. So does the President believe in the Media Shield law that 
the one the one that he didn't like and then you guys renegotiated. Does he believe in the media shield law that a reporter's private email and private phone calls should be subject to some sort of subpoena? I, I recognize that as a former practitioner as a clever way to get me to comment on a specific case, but I, I can't. What I can tell you is the President believed that the media shield law that he, his administration helped negotiate with the Senate uh, achieves, uh, at least in part, the balance that he says he supports and that he wants to see. And as a firm defender of the First Amendment and the freedom of the press, uh, he, he seeks that balance. Even as Commander-in-Chief, he believes it's essential that we are able to uh, take seriously, uh, very serious leaks that can, can jeopardize our national security, jeopardize our men and women. Uh, and uh, the, the fact that we describe it as a balance reflects that this is, this is a difficult is issue. The point but of going after leakers and intent to keep people from leaking? I think the, again, I would refer you to the Justice Department. I think in general, the issue is to uh, make sure that leaks that can jeopard, that, that are very serious, uh, are taken seriously. In terms of how that action, how that is acted upon by the Department of Justice, I would refer you to them. No, but I mean, do, do, if the, is the intended consequence to prevent people from you're giving out any the, information. You're asking me about the purposes of a criminal investigation. I think that if there's a criminal investigation writ large, obviously there is at least a suspicion of criminal activity. I would refer you to the Department of Justice uh, about the purpose of a criminal investigation. But your intent is to make sure people are... I think the intent of criminal investigations is to uh, uncover whether crimes have been committed and to hold people who've committed crimes accountable. All right. On the IRS, is the President at all upset that uh, basically his entire senior staff knew of this and he didn't? First of all, his entire senior staff did not know. There were some senior staff who were alerted by White House counsel. Uh, secondly, the president, uh, well, I believe, and I think you know, he uh, has faith that it is entirely appropriate that nobody here took any action in any way to intervene in an ongoing audit investigation by the inspector general. Nobody's saying any action, but just well, not giving him a heads up. I wouldn't say nobody's saying that, but the, uh, uh, or at least suggesting it, but, but. He, no, he believes it's entirely appropriate that, you know, some matters do not, uh, are not appropriate to convey to him, uh, and this is one of them. The, the fact that there's an ongoing, but I mean, you've asked him this specific question. Are I'm you not satisfied? Are you satisfied that, that that he had to learn through the media, not through his senior staff? The president is obviously aware of the course of these uh, reports. I would tell you that it is entirely appropriate uh, that uh, the president not be notified of something of an ongoing. Uh, not concluded inspector general audit of the IRS activity uh, because I guess the suggestion of alerting him is that then he would do something and if he were to do something imagine uh, what that story would look like uh, it's it's something that you know we can look to the history books to to get a feel for and it is absolutely the cardinal rule uh, as we see it uh, that we do not intervene in ongoing investigations uh, and that's true uh, of uh, one of the matters that's come up with regards to reporters, and it's true, you know, because that's an ongoing criminal investigation or criminal investigations uh, conducted by the Department of Justice, and it's abs and it's true of an of an Inspector General's audit of the IRS. Is the President satisfied uh, with the job Eric Shinseki has done as Secretary of uh, Veterans Affairs? The President is, and he is also made clear to. He is satisfied. He, well, he is. He is satisfied. He has confidence in General Shinseki, but he has made it clear to, as I've said in the past, uh, to the general and to others that he expects results uh, as they try to tackle this very difficult issue of the backlog uh, at the VA. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is something that has the attention of uh, the President. It has the attention of the Chief of Staff. We are monitoring uh, efforts to alleviate the backlog very closely. This is something that the President has made clear to all of us uh, he wants to see action on. Peter, then Mark. Thank you, Thank you Jay. Uh, does the President believe that the Justice Department has complete autonomy in how it pursues, carries out leak investigations, or does the President believe there are some, there is a balancing act between protecting the work and rights of journalists and also getting to the bottom of leak investigations? Has he shared his opinion with uh, Attorney General Holder about how that balance should be struck? Well, I, I can tell you that back in 2009, there was a letter from, I believe, the Attorney General and the ODNI uh, in support of uh, 
if I have my if my memory is correct, in support of the media shield legislation, and I think that reflects as a policy matter the president's position. Uh, I don't have any conversations to uh, read out to you that the president uh, has had in the past with the attorney general. I think that the president's views are clearly expressed and have been for some time since he was a senator. Uh, there are, as I understand it but I think you have to get this information more specifically from the Department of Justice, rules and procedures that are followed in these matters. Uh, but again, that's something uh, not housed here. Uh, that's just something I've read in the paper. Follow-up question. Um, the, uh, in terms of the timeline issue, um, Congress is now looking into questions involving the IRS. They want to know, they're asking questions about what administration officials knew what when. Mm -hmm. To what degree will the White House cooperate with these reviews and inquiries? Will you share emails, provide uh, witness testimony? To what degree? Um, well, I'm not going to anticipate how that would uh, play out, except to say that, as I said earlier, uh, and as others have said, that we believe that legitimate oversight in this matter uh, is something that we will cooperate with and should. Uh, we think it's a very serious issue, as the President has made clear. We think that it's wholly inappropriate that this conduct occurred regardless of the motivation. And again, we have some information about whether, you know, what the motivation was or wasn't uh, based on the IG's report and his testimony. Uh, but even if the motivation wasn't uh, nefarious or partisan or political, uh, it is still inappropriate conduct. It is still not the kind of conduct that uh, we can tolerate uh, at the IRS, which is why the President has spoken out so clearly and why he's taken the action that he has. Last question, the Republicans on the Hill have said Part of the reason the president may have found out when he did through media reports is to preserve deniability for him. The White House officials might have been interested in that. Um, could you speak to that particular charge? Well, I, it's a uh, absurd uh, suggestion. It is entirely appropriate, <coughs> as uh, the White House counsel did, to, to uh, decide that this was not a matter to inform the president about. It was an ongoing investigation or audit by the inspector general. Uh, into activity at the IRS. Uh, it was past conduct. I think that's important, too. This was not something that could be that, uh, upon learning about, someone could have said, okay, we need to take action now because it's happening as we speak. It's, it was inf conveyed that it, this was past conduct that had ceased almost a year prior, uh, and therefore it was entirely appropriate uh, to wait until there were the final results of the IG report before uh, acting. And, and again, that is why the President found out from news reports, because uh, those news reports occurred prior to the report actually being released. Mark. Jay, it's still not clear to me why senior staff wouldn't think it was worthwhile to let the president know if there's something possibly politically explosive coming down the pipeline and that, Mr. President, you ought to know that this is coming even though you can't act on it right now. Well, again, that was a uh, decision made appropriately by the White House counsel that this you was... You say appropriately. Did, does, did the president not feel, you know, you should have told me about this kind of thing. It's coming down the pipeline. No. I could have... Uh, you can prepare to act even if you're not going to act right away. Well, again, that's not something uh, that uh, was necessary to inform the president about. It's not appropriate because, again, it begs the question, as you included in your question, okay, then what should he do? And it, it, it would be inappropriate for uh, him or anyone else here to take any action that would intervene in an ongoing investigative matter like the IRS audit of, uh, rather the IG audit of IRS activity. Uh, and that's why it was uh, the appropriate action to take to wait until the report came out. I mean, I think that, that uh, it was conduct that had happened in the past that was not ongoing. Uh, there was an indication of, uh, at the top line level, of what the findings would likely be, although the, uh, the audit was not complete and those, those findings can and have changed in the past. Uh, and once that report was released, the President acted very quickly and responded very quickly, and it was not necessary or appropriate to inform him of an ongoing IG audit. Are you aware yeah. of any information that was withheld from the President that he later said, hey, you should have let me that know that was coming? No. Julianne. Jay, last Monday, you said that it was your understanding that the council's office was alerted the week of April 22nd of this year only about the fact that the IG was finishing a review about matters involving the office in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. But that now sounds more like what you're describing the council's office found out about on April 16th. Well, no, I, look, matters involving, that was shorthand, matters involving the office in Cincinnati, in other words, the fact that there was conduct. But, but that but sounds pretty top line and information, right. and now you're saying that the information was actually 
that the finding that the line that line IR is in place and properly scrutinize certain 501c4 organizations by using words like Tea Party and Patriot. Right. And 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 I'm making clear now that when I activity in Cincinnati because it had been reported already when I answered that question was very specifically about as I just said. Uh, line our IRS employees in Cincinnati improperly scrutinizing 501c4 organizations by using words like Tea Party in quotes and Patriot. Uh, Council was further informed that the report had not yet been finalized and the publication date of the report was uncertain but likely soon. And, and so that's the extent of what the notification was. In any case, the most important point is that uh, that information was based on a report that you know, the notification about a report that had not been concluded and that uh, no action could or should be taken until that report was concluded, which is why, uh, and, and no intervention, which is, uh, you know, why the, the, uh, we adopted the posture we did, which was in spite of the incoming from the press and others, we waited appropriately until the report was published before uh, the President uh, took action in response to that report, because up to that point it was just press reports based on uh, supposed leaks or partial leaks of draft uh, draft report from the IG. But what was the difference really between the information that was found out on April 24th and then the news reports on May 10th? Because it was it was similar it was that information about uh, IRS using words like Tea Party and Patriot to to scrutinize these these groups and the president still waited the whole weekend to comment on this. Well, wait, he waited until he, uh, I mean, he was asked, he had to make some general comment in response to a question, but we waited for a uh, full response until we had a report. I mean, I think your point is right. It was basic information when the White House counsel got it. It was still basic information when it hit the news reports. And our decision was that it would not be appropriate for the President of the United States to take action based on press reports on uh, anonymously sourced leaks, uh, partial leaks of a draft IG report. There's essentially three weeks between both of those uh, times of getting that information from April 24th mm -hmm. to May 10th. And White House officials, senior staff had had discussions, as you just said, about how to respond to it and what those preliminary findings would be. So why did it seem like the White House, the President, wasn't better prepared to address this when it came out on May 10th? Uh, again, the, the conversations were based on the notification of this as yet at that point completed IG audit. Uh, there were discussions about uh, when that audit would be completed and what its potential findings might be. Uh, and as I said earlier, the, the, that kind of notification, <clears throat> you know, via Treasury comes when uh, there is an expectation with the conclusion of a report that there might be uh, interest in it at congressional or media level. But all of that is, is uh, anticipating the release of a report and and the reaction we might have to it and again the 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 initial disclosure of it on that Friday was not anticipated the report was not completed we were waiting until the report was completed and, and just to clarify is it the Treasury General Counsel's office that tells the White House General Counsel's office or is it I, another I, channel from the I think that's correct that, that that's how the notification happened yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes go ahead. Uh, thanks Jay this is not a question about an ongoing criminal investigation. It's a question <laughs> about the balance that the president says mm -hmm. he wants to strike between press freedoms and national security interests. Does the president see a circumstance in which a reporter soliciting information from a government source is committing a criminal act in doing so? As I said to Chuck, that is... And it's not. It's, it's just about what the president well, believes, I, and it's it's valid. I, the president believes that we need to find this balance. The president believes and defend believes in and defends the First Amendment. The president believes the press uh, needs to be able to uh, pursue investigative journalism. The president also believes that, as commander in chief and as a citizen, that it is important that uh, classified information that, if leaked, could be harmful to our national security and endanger the lives of Americans or those who are helping uh, the United States uh, must be taken seriously, that we cannot allow that to happen. And if we don't take it seriously, uh, there are consequences to that. And so that is the balance he seeks. I, asking me that question, that I'm sorry? Who decides that harm? But I mean, if a government source wants to give it up, they're making a judgment there, then and there as well. Again, I can't address 
the question about that, that goes specifically to a report today about an ongoing criminal investigation. I understand uh, the interest in it, but it is just not appropriate for me, again, based on a news report uh, or in any case, to talk about an ongoing criminal investigation into a, what is being reported as into a very serious leak. I can't do it. What I can tell you uh, is where the President comes down broadly on these issues, as reflected not just in what he said last week, but where he's been since he was a senator, and uh, the legislation that he has supports, that he supported and supports to this day. Uh, and, uh, you know, he, as I think I said last week, uh, you know, on the broader matter, I know because I've spent time talking to him in general as a former reporter and as someone who works with him and for him now, uh, that he believes very strongly in the need for reporters to be able to pursue investigative journalism, uh, that he believes that that balance has to be struck uh, in a way that allows that freedom to take place. Uh, but he also has to be mindful of the need to protect classified information because of our national security interests. Peter. Uh, Jay, can I, I, on a non-ongoing criminal investigation, you so were- Nobody's going to ask me about it. No, 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 when you were time, yeah. I'm asking about a very beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm actually, yeah. prior okay. to your service here, you, you were- Bureau Chief at Time Magazine, one of your reporters prior, just prior to you becoming Bureau Chief, got caught up in a leak investigation. What would you have said if the government had told you that he had been involved in a crime for reporting on the Valerie Plain case? Well, again, Peter, I, it, it's really, about what you I, talk about. This uh, I understand what you the, the interest because of my former uh, occupation. And I can tell you that I feel, as the President does, very strongly in the need to ensure that we have uh, a press that's able to pursue investigative journalism uh, freely. Uh, but we also have to protect those national security interests uh, that are at stake. And again, I, I think I mentioned what Director Mueller had said uh, about one of the matters that's under discussion now. This is, this is serious. Uh, these are serious issues. Uh, in terms of procedures that are followed in their investigations, I have to refer you to the Department of Justice. They're the ones who have the answers. I, no, but I've been on. 2005, would, would, should Matt Cooper have gone to jail for reporting? But that's a hypothetical it's not based hypothetical. on a, an example. It's actually no, quite the no, opposite. No, 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 it's a hypothetical. It's a very it's real case, a very real situation. As right. Bureau Chief, what would you have said if the Department of Justice came to you and said, Matt Cooper going to jail? Because you're saying, what would I have said if they had said? And, and that's a hypothetical. It's a very real case, and they could have made the exact same logical leap that the Department of Justice seems to have made in 2009 in this case. Again, I. There's a Department of Justice ongoing criminal investigation into a specific matter that I can't comment on. And, you know, that, that case has been played out and written much about, uh, including by uh, Mr. Cooper and others. And uh, the history of that is well known. I, I, I'm not going to extrapolate hypothetically about what might have happened in that and how it relates to an ongoing criminal investigation. Jay, but I, I, I think it was a great effort. I mean, is it, is it, fair, to <laughs> say, though, is it, is it fair to say, though, that, that President Obama's view of this balance tilts extremely heavily towards the government's interest and away from the president? Absolutely not. That's why it's called a balance. Alexis. Jay, Jay can I just go back on the IRS to the April 16th? You mentioned mm -hmm. that the White House counsel was given information in a series series of items for her attention and mm -hmm. that this was relatively routine to alert her and then mm -hmm. she discussed it with the White House Chief of Staff. I just want to follow up uh, to make sure I understand. If, if that series of items or any other series of items that was, is presented to her includes information about an IG report, it is the President's desire and the practice here that he is not notified of an IG report. Uh, when it's underway until it's completed. Is that what you're saying? I, I can tell you that as a general matter, when there are ongoing investigations like this, uh, the White House counsel makes the call about whether or not, uh, after she's been notified, uh, who she should also alert. And in, and in this case, and I think that it reflects a general approach, when there is an ongoing investigation or audit, uh, as it is termed here, uh, into a matter like this that uh, was not complete, uh, that it was not necessary or appropriate to notify the President, uh, because we knew that that report would be concluded. We knew that there would uh, potentially be changes in the report, uh, as is, I mean, as a general matter, that can happen uh, between the, you know, in the, in the final stages of, a, of an IRS audit, I mean, an IG audit, audit in this case of the IRS. Uh, and so that was the uh, decision of counsel and the recommendation of counsel to others uh, but it, it, truly as a routine matter, this is not, this is just, you know, there's a lot of uh, information that courses through uh, a White House and 
matters that uh, rise to the level of presidential attention have, you know, that there's a lot of decision that making that goes into that. And, and this was certainly not one that it was deemed appropriate or necessary to alert the president to. For audits or IG uh, investigations, the president is sometimes informed. I, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, you're trying to put words in my mouth. And I, I know I understand you're trying to get a general principle here. Yeah. I think that the council, uh, as I'm sure is, has been the case in, in past White Houses, uh, makes a decision about what information, what notification that uh, he or she receives uh, merits uh, conveying to the president or conveying to other senior staff. And in this case, uh, she made uh, uh, the judgment that it did not. And again, I think that the focus on this is I'm interesting. The no, but, but, but the focus on this is, is interesting because the, it does beg the question, uh, if, if there is criticism out there that the president wasn't notified in advance, what is the suggestion that he should have done something about it in advance? I'm because, because obviously right, that would be wholly inappropriate. Just because ID reports are not unusual, and members mm -hmm. of Congress in this case requested this, mm -hmm. and my question is really about: Is the president always going to wear blinders if a if an IG report is going on? And that's what I've tried to get at. Yeah, so, I, I, so in the last month, I just want to make sure I understand that when the president sat down every day with his chief of staff, or he met with his treasury secretary, they understood in general what was happening with this particular issue and they never said anything to the president well that's correct beginning with april 24th in terms of the white house counsel and the chief of staff uh, I, again i think any any examination of the previous well three weeks leading up to last week uh, would say that there was uh, a lot of information that could be discussed in the meetings with the president and there was one other follow-up the president um, has a legislative affairs director and you all monitor what goes on on the Hill very closely. That's routine. Mm -hmm. When a member of Congress requests an audit, an, inv a, a, you know, a, an independent audit, isn't the White House customarily aware through the Legislative Affairs Office which members of Congress are requesting that and whether that's I don't that think that members accepted? of Congress come through the White House on their way to requesting uh, action by ins inspectors general. But you monitor what they're doing. So well, I, I'm not sure that in, in that case that we're not, I mean, I, I, I don't know as a broad matter whether, uh, how, how closely that's monitored. Again, I think it's fair to say there are scores of ongoing inspector general audits and so, investigations so happening as we speak. So what Congressman Issa does, you, you, you do monitor pretty closely, correct? Well, because uh, a chairman like that is engaging directly with the White House and the administration requesting information as part of an oversight matter. That is different from asking or requesting an independent inspector general uh, review or audit. And you don't know, though. You, yeah, just, uh, you don't know. I, I guess I'm so, asking, Alexis. I think you're, you're, you're kind of, okay, one other quick I'm not sure the, the point so you're trying to make here, one, but the, the fact is that there's a lot of ongoing IG uh, right. reviews happening. And uh, <laughs> they're routine in the sense of their number. Uh, some of them have to do with very serious matters. Some of them. Uh, conclude that you know that non-serious things happen. This was obviously something that concluded uh, that activity took place. That, as the president views, it is entirely inappropriate, and that people need to be held accountable, and we need to take action to ensure it doesn't happen again. Another clarification: When you were gathering information last week, just to follow up on what the front row was asking, to in what you could tell us about when the White House first knew about the IRS. Uh, discussion and everything that you told us about the White House counsel. I just want to make sure I understand. You did or you did not know that she had also advised Dennis McDonough, the chief of staff, and other senior members of the staff. What I knew at the time is, again, what I just said today is that the White House counsel, Kathy Rumler, was uh, notified in the week of April 22nd. I did find out that that specifically was April 24th, uh, and that she notified other members of you senior staff. That last week, I, I, I can't remember specifically, but the, but the point is, is that. No, so I, I'm not sure that I, that I knew it at that time, but the, the point is, Kathy Rummler is a point of contact here. She made the decision uh, or the judgment that it was not necessary or appropriate to inform the president of this, and that didn't happen. And most importantly, no action was taken by anyone in this building uh, to intervene, because the focus here is on, well, if you knew that, then what? Did right? she tell but staff they couldn't tell the president? No, she didn't. She didn't tell. It was her did judgment that it was not was necessary. To. <laughs> but did she tell staff that again? Do again, I'm this sorry, was this I'm sorry, was, this was I'm uh, confused by a handful of staff, not the entire is, staff. Were you walled off from a fuller picture of what people knew and when they knew it last week as compared no. to today? No. So then, it was. Your I, I'm choice. just saying that, that we're you obviously chose. dealing with a lot, a lot of information here. Last week we were focused uh, intently on. 
uh, Benghazi and but other matters as well us, as this one. You only gave us a version. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that I have, uh, because of the confusion, uh, which I, uh, you know, which has appeared and in the questions that have been asked, uh, I gathered this information for you to provide you uh, the kind of detail that I think you're interested in. So, but going uh, forward, is that going to be your practice? Uh, Alexis, I, let me let me get to some other people. April, um, on I, two questions on IRS and on the AP story and James Rosen story. Um, what rises to the level of the president's attention? What merits the president's attention on items around here? Since the IRS issue did not make that mark. April, uh, uh, since you're asked that it's at least in the beginning in, re uh, in reference to ongoing criminal investigations, the president does not intervene in ongoing congressional investigations. Obviously, he uh, closely follows the media. He understands uh, uh, a lot about uh, a lot of issues and, and follows them closely. But the, again, last week there was this sort of uh, insistence that the, the, the suggestion that the President should have been notified and done something about an ongoing criminal investigation. And I would suggest to you uh, that that would truly be a story. What I'm, asking, what I'm asking, what merits the President's attention around here? That's what I'm asking. I, I, I'm not even sure how to answer that question. The President is attentive to uh, s scores of issues every day. He is focused on his agenda that, that is uh, designed to uh, protect and grow the middle class, uh, to help our economy grow and create jobs. Uh, he is focused very intently on uh, steps that need to be taken to ensure that our national security interests are protected, uh, very specifically in re reaction to uh, uh, another matter. Uh, he's, he, he wants to see congressional action. Uh, to upgrade and, and fully fund uh, security for our embassies and diplomatic facilities around the world. Uh, you know, these are the kinds of issues that he's focused on. Okay, In this matter, as I think I've said numerous times, it was not appropriate for him uh, to engage in a criminal investigation or engage in uh, an ongoing inspector's uh, independent audit of uh, the IRS. All right, now on the other issue, on the James Rosen EP story, what makes this country at this moment different from any other country that the president has gone to that monitors the press and when he goes there saying he's calling for press freedoms. What, what makes us different now than those countries? We have uh, uh, the First Amendment. We have a great tradition of press freedom here. The president supports that tradition and he's a defender of the rights contained within the First Amendment. The amendment. He is a defender of uh, the right of the press to pursue investigative journalism. He is also, as I've said, as president and as a citizen, uh, insistent upon the need to make sure that uh, classified leaks that can endanger our national security and endanger the lives of American women and men and women overseas, uh, you know, be taken seriously, uh, and and that is a balance that he seeks, and it is a balance reflected in the legislation that he has supported and supports today. Do you agree that the process that he now supports is now hampered, and people are not handling? Uh, reporting and investigative journalism the way they used to prior to a couple of weeks ago? Well, I don't know if that's to be the case. Thank Christy. You, Thank you, Jay. I just want to make sure yeah, I'm clear I'll, I'll, on a couple I'll, I'll of things. I'll get a couple from the back. Who just, I just want to make sure I'm clear on two things. One is, um, did the White House Counsel see the draft or any portion of it? No. And did the White House Counsel or any member of the senior staff who knew about this send back comment, advice, requests about the drafting of the final report? No. Um, let me, uh, yes, ma'am. Um, Jay, the violence in Iraq has hit a new high. Prime Minister Maliki said today that he blamed it partially on the Syrian war in Syria. Do you worry that in the end, actually, in Syria might drive the region in a bigger conflict? Well, let me say that we strongly condemn the attacks perpetrated in Iraq over the past several days, and we are deeply concerned by the frequency and the nature of recent attacks, including bombings today, attacks on Iraqi security forces in Anbar over the weekend and a series of attacks on both Sunni and Shia neighborhoods and mosques. The targeting of innocent people in an effort to sow instability and division is reprehensible. Our condolences go out to the victims of these attacks and to their families. Over the weekend, U.S. officials in Baghdad and Washington were in contact with a wide range of senior Iraqi leaders to urge calm and help resolve ongoing political and sectarian tensions. These talks have focused on specific steps to avoid further violence and resolve key issues peacefully through dialogue and the political process. The U.S. remains committed to supporting Iraq's democratic system and urges Iraq's leaders to continue working toward a peaceful resolution of tensions through dialogue. 
Uh, in answer to your question, we remain deeply concerned about the rise of violent extremism and how it further endangers the future both of Syria and its neighbors. And we call on those inside Syria and fleeing from Syria to refrain from sectarian retributions. Sectarian reprisals play directly into the regime's hands and do not move closer to the inclusive post-Assad future that the Syrian people deserve. How do you respond yeah. to the international community when they say that the lack of action in Syria <coughs> is more costly than the actual action? With the well, I think both of, these, both of these issues are uh, very serious, and I think that the United States, as the uh, largest provider of humanitarian aid and the largest provider of uh, non-lethal assistance to the Syrian opposition uh, has acted and will continue to act in support of uh, the, a transition in Syria uh, to a post-Bashar uh, al-Assad future. And we are working with our partners and allies and we are working with the Syrian opposition daily to help bring that about uh, and uh, are constantly reviewing the options we have available to us to help bring that about. Thanks, Jay. Um, Jay, yeah. Myanmar. All right. Myanmar. Myanmar in the back, yes. Myanmar? All the way back. Myanmar? Yeah. Thank you, Jay. Because okay. uh, we do have an important state visit today, so. Yeah. Uh, two questions on Myanmar. As you just mentioned, you just called uh, Burma as Myanmar, and also in the statement the other day released by the White House called Burma as Myanmar. What kind of signal are you trying to send out? Well, let me, uh, let me address that. The United States government, over time, has begun to allow limited use of the name Myanmar as a diplomatic courtesy. Burma has undertaken a number of positive reforms, including releasing over 850 political prisoners, easing media restriction, permitting freedom of speech, assembly, and movement. We have responded by expanding our engagement with the government, easing a number of sanctions, and as a courtesy in appropriate settings, more frequently using the name Myanmar. While we are not changing our policy to officially adopt Myanmar, we believe that showing respect for a government that is pursuing an ambitious, uh, ambitious reform uh, government uh, that is pursuing an ambitious reform uh, program uh, and a government that is pursuing uh, that agenda is an important signal of support for its efforts and our desire to help the transformation succeed. But our policy remains that Burma is the name of the country. Jay, also, uh, many believe uh, the expansion of the U.S. influence in Myanmar is at the expense of China. Uh, what kind of role the, the president is expecting the Myanmar to play in his policy of rebalance to Asia? Well, I think that we are engaging with Myanmar in response to the meaningful steps in the right direction that has been taken in that country. Uh, but we also recognize that reforms there are fragile, and there are many additional steps that need to be taken to truly transition to democracy, including protecting the rights of all of the people of Burma, including ethnic minorities, and ensuring that the military is subordinate to civilian oversight. Uh, we are obviously uh, very much engaged in Asia, and uh, we have talked about the, uh, the rebalancing and the pivot toward Asia that is very much a focus of the President's foreign policy. Uh, but engagement with Burma uh, has to do with uh, the specific actions taken and the meaningful steps taken in the right direction by uh, the Burmese government. Thank you all very much. Oh, yeah. Did the, the Treasury Union Chief